All right, we are live today is May 13, 2017. Hello, everybody. We have Douglas, Ellie, Gabriel, uh, Lila, Sher, Stephanie, Temple, and Jim. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Jim's room. Hello, I have here Angie, Barbara, Helga, and uh, Ray. And we're expecting Carolyn, I think, to also come. Um, now I think, uh, yeah, announcements, right? Um, so everything is now on hucola.org. Um, workshop, uh, the main announcement is if, if you're thinking about visiting our workshop, uh, Ascension workshop, it's time to buy air tickets because air tickets become really expensive in, in, in the summer. Now is like the last moments when the tickets are still of reasonable prices. It's in Buffalo, New York. It's for uh, uh, four days, four, four, four days and five. Oh, my microphone is bad. Four full, full days and five nights. And um, um, we are going to teach, uh, Takura is going to teach Galactic Reiki. Uh, we'll do a lot of um, meditation and work on the Earth energy grid. We already have over 20 people signed up, and I think the limit will be around 40 because we'll run out of uh, showers. We still can get more uh, portable toilets, but showers is, is more difficult. So we have only six showers, so that's the limit. So we we have we will we invited many uh, channel guests, and uh, some of them are but in all of them are exceptional but some of them are likely to come so we'll announce when they confirm that they're coming and the prices will raise the price every 12 people when we add 12 people will raise the price it's, just, it's uh, the nature how the money works um but and we don't make any profit there we um we don't intend to make any profit we just made the prices as low as possible so you you so people can come at, at, at how much it really costs to, and it's very, very inexpensive. It's in the campground with, a, with wonderful cabins and wonderful nature. So we'll have a um, campfire, we'll sit around the campfire and do meditations and things of that sort. Lots of work. It's a work on your health, your Reiki and ascension. It's energy work, very highly intended. So to go go to hukula.org, there is workshop there. There is uh, this webinar is uh, paid for um, club members. You subscribe at ten dollars a month by going to hukula.org and clicking club. Uh, there is a discussion going on in Facebook. Go to hukula.org, click on discussion, and uh, all the events I do Tuesdays and Friday channelings. Join me. It's free. And join me going to hukula.org, there is a calendar. And we are planning the class this Friday, this coming Friday, the class. We are practicing for the workshop, so this will be real stuff. Takura is going to channel Galactic Reiki introduction to the Galactic Reiki. And it is um, 12.30, EST on Friday. So go to hukula.org, it's there. And I think that's about it. Uh, there are a few guests coming later, but it's like the as soon as uh, everything will be published on hukula.org. Anything else? The time. All right. The time. The time on Friday is very difficult for us who works. Right. Uh, but you can watch the the recording. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's um, the time is non-existent here. Uh, all right, uh, but uh, we'll we'll try to to switch to other time. But this time is already scheduled. Uh, what what time would be good? Well, for us in, in uh, East, it will be afternoon. You know, like maybe seven o'clock. So that will be you time. Will be five o'clock afternoon. Seven, eight. When people are at seven home. in the evening. Okay. Yes. I will we'll discuss that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, seven, it's 10 for me. Um, I'm sleeping at that time. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> but that is yeah. afternoon for you will be five o'clock afternoon in in San Diego. Oh, oh. east coast 7 p.m is 10 p.m oh the other way around you're right it is it's three 4 hours 4, 4 p.m three hours okay mm -hmm. yeah i was wrong okay all right uh, i'm done uh now you can guys uh you can do invitations you wanted to invite people okay if anyone wants to invite someone to channel let me know um i know that there are some people here already but um if there's anyone that has an important message that you feel that that there's an important message they need to bring uh suggest them oh gaia i was wondering if gaia could come and give gaia us okay somebody mentioned gaia and actorians we haven't talked with actorians in a really long time okay and the humans on the colony, we haven't spoken to them in a really long time either. Oh, okay. Very and good. Maybe one of the El Collective, maybe El Yin. It's a collective that we haven't spoke with until El now. El Yin, okay. Okay. I'll yeah, they just got to the area. I have not spoken to El Yin at all. I know they are around now, but I have not spoken to them, at, at least not at this point. We have spoken oh, to that? El Ka, the El, and Elohim, but the El Yin we have not spoken to. Any of the El is always welcome, and the El Yin are very interesting from what I heard about them. Okay. I would like to invite um, humans and hybrids from outer space. Oh, okay. George Harrison would be also nice. Oh, George Harrison? Oh, yeah, he was very into yoga. Maybe he, he learned something what he can give us advice. All right. We'll see who comes here. Anybody else? Okay. Very good. Oh, I have one. Uh, Carlos Castaneda. I think who is that? Very interesting. Oh, he's great. Who is Carlos? Castaneda. He's wonderful. He did. He 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 talks about all that stuff. What we already know. What? Oh. He knew. <laughs> what he already knew. Now we are talking. Amazing. Uh, okay. Yeah, he had an amazing he's, life. Uh, well, like being then. I is he an author of some sort? Yes, he got Do books. Okay. Very the good. teachings of Don Juan. The teachings of Don Juan. Yes. Yeah, okay. exactly. I don't I don't know if he's here or not, but we'll see if he comes. Okay. Oh. All right, is that it? I hope that uh, we have some good messages. Let me start with a prayer. Okay? And it we'll kick it off with uh, a little uh, prayer here. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day, for this time together, for this fellowship with the heart and the unconditional love that we share with each other. Help us to all connect in a great way, in a loving way, in a way that uh, brings us into an understanding of what true ascension is, what true rising into the spirit is about. I know that there are so many definitions of what it is, but it doesn't matter about the definition. It matters about the heart and how it's moving and the love and the way it's moving in to the, in a positive and a brilliant way to gather people up, to let them know that they are loved, let them know that there is a God and that he loves them and is with them. Let us all be a great example of this to each other. Remember, be slow to anger and be uh, quick to, admon to uh, help each other out if there's any problems and to love each other with all the love in your heart. So I just pray that today will lift us up, bring us some information that is necessary and keep us um, on the right path. Much love.
much love. Alrighty then, give me one moment to do a meditation, my little, my middle meditation thing, and we'll see who comes first. Thank you. Greetings from the colonies. This is Douglas. Hey, um, Douglas. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I have not spoken to you for a while, and some people were wondering if there are still humans working on the colonies, and it is true that we are still here. Some have uh, changed out, but we are moving along uh, uh, most wonderfully uh, with the alien groups here. And um, we are here to answer some questions for you, if you have any questions about the colonies. And I know I don't want to speak for a long time because there are others that have greater messages. But I wanted to give a refresher on the colonies. You realize there are six colonies now, the sixth being the healing colony. And that is where they did the study for galactic Reiki for your uh for it to occur to teach what? but they had learned uh which uh, modalities of healing were no, effective for earth and for uh effective in the earth energies since they have changed and so now uh they will be giving uh some teachings on what works and a little history of course on all the different uh symbols and things that they are going to bring to you but, of course, the telepathic and languages is still number one. Number two is still diet, uh, exercise, and health, and um, uh, also uh, eating healthier. Number three is still the filmmaking. Number four is still channeling. Number five is still the entertainment and relaxation area. And now number six is the healing area. So they're working on number seven. There's some um, uh, deliberation about what uh, it should actually be called because they want to give it the most proper name because it will be about meeting together uh, and having community in a more serious way about interacting in a different way uh, with your fellow aliens. So it is not um, necessarily just a meeting place but it is more of a, a place for interaction of all different <coughs> kinds. So we don't want to just call it a meeting place, but uh, we're working on that kind of an area where, which will not be divided up too much, but be a more of a conversation area. But um, it is lovely to see that we are moving forward and that many of you are coming with us. Is there any questions? Hello, Douglas. It's me, Gabriel. I miss talking to you. I miss talking to the people of Earth as well, Gabriel. It's, it is a beautiful time right now, but we're very busy, and much is happening on the planet. So uh, we have to uh, maintain uh, a business-like stance in some ways to keep everything moving in a very positive and flowing manner. And we've learned to do that, but now that the Fendorians, and now we are adding the Syrians to our, our uh, alliance, uh, we are doing a lot of training and they are learning a lot of things. And the Fendorians have taken over many places where people needed vacations and things of that nature. And we have a greater force of tech, uh, I don't know what you would call it, technicians, I guess, and uh, those who understand the workings of the ship. 
and the workings yeah. of what is happening. So we are moving forward and we are doing everything we can to keep Earth as safe as possible in the way that we are permitted to do. Can I, I'm wondering about what I'm doing on the colonies now because I don't have any memories at all really. I don't get anything and I don't even know how much I'm going there. And then I, um, can, can I request to go to another planet as well? A new planet. You have requested that, yes. There has been times when they are, they have uh, taken you to different places. However, right now your orb, there is no orb. The gold orb that was once in you has was malfunctioning they removed it and you have not received another one and that will help you with memories and things of that nature you know that that is coming within the next few weeks the the reason for the delay is it appears that your system uh, is very hard on them this will be your third orb and um your system seems not to work with them as well as some of the other systems so they're wondering why that is. But um, but you remember the first one worked very well. Yes. I, I thought they put that in the orb yesterday because I got so much energy the night. Well, it, they did give you some energy yesterday, but the orb is still not in. But they were checking for a few uh, other things uh, to make sure that everything was... Uh, perfect before they give it to you, but I'm sure that energy boost was uh, them checking you out Because that is an energy beam that comes Thank you. I, f I still feel balanced by that so uh, I Invite them to send me more balance and you before I go to bed It's always very nice. Very good Hello Douglas Greetings share. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing well. There's been, there was a period where I took a little sabbatical, if you want to call it that, from the colonies, but now I am back and everything is working out very well. I had some third dimensional family matters to take care of and other things, and so I took some time off. So, but now I am back and I will be coming here quite often. I see. Uh, last time that I heard, they want to move the colonies to ERA in order to expand them. Is that already happened or in the making? Well, ERA has its own version of the colonies already because Ken Jean wanted to, uh, to have a certain group of people, uh, an elite group, if you will, an exclusive group, to come to his particular uh, colonies. So he did develop colonies around era already and on era but yes he would like to have a greater group at this point That's i would have to check in with him in order for me to say more so people uh, basically keep on going to the ships they're going to the ships yes and there are several different colony number one several different colony number twos because they have the uh, different ships around the planet, of course, so not all of them are for the English-speaking uh, humans. There are some for the Asians, different uh, groups around the planet with different language uh, uh, colonies. I see. Uh, I was wondering if I was in the colony lately. I know that I've been traveling a lot and to different places, and yes. I was wondering... When was the last time that I visited the colonies? It was in uh, April. But I'm not sure what day. I'd have to ask Sengi. But I know it was in April and it was a Friday. That's all I can tell you because Takur was there and she visits on Fridays. So I knew that Takur was there when you were there. So it was on a Friday in April. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. It's good to speak with you again. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, you mentioned Friday. I thought uh, seven day week is unique to, to Earth, isn't it? What did you say? You're very soft. Oh, I thought that seven day week is uh, unique to Earth. 
Yes, but we use it because uh, humans identify with it. So we have to give them something that they identify with. There are different kinds of calendars here with the different species. They all have their own kind of calendar. But when dealing with humans, we must use the Earth calendar. Is there anything universal, like a week for the galaxy? There is a galactic calendar, yes. But we do not use it for Earthlings. What is the length of the week in the galaxy? Oh, it's quite a long time, actually. It's, it's like four years in, on Earth. Uh, what's the length of the week in, uh, on ERA? On ERA, it's much shorter. It's, I'm not exactly sure of the time and date. There are so many different calendars and different things here. I would check for you. But I'm sure it's similar, but their rotation is a little slower than yours. So it would be probably just slightly slower. So their days might be a little longer or I am not sure and how that goes around their sun, that would uh, make a difference as well. I'm thinking that uh, seven days is because we have seven chakras and uh, it is something unique to humans. So I wonder if other <clears throat> Well, human actually it fits have... into a mathematical grid with the earth. The seven, the seven days and the seven and the 24 hours, it's not exactly 24 hours, but you understand. Um, it, I do not believe it has to do with the chakras as much as the ancient legends of how things are created. But that is all right. There are many different legends from the past. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm new to the colonies, so I was just wondering if I visit or if I've ever been there. Have you asked to visit? What is your name? Alicia. Alicia. I could check with Sengi and see if you had been scheduled. But if you want to visit the colonies, you may do so. And if and she is already now aware that you want to visit. So they will put you on the calendar. Thanks. You are welcome. Is there a particular colony that you would like to visit? I don't think I'm familiar enough with the colonies yet to know. They will check it out on your interview when they, when they bring you up. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Leela and I have similar question. I heard from Takua that I was on the colony sometime, whatever, but I would like to know if it's possible, when was the f that, uh, when was a first time that I was uh, visiting the colonies. Oh, you have no memory at all of it? Completely amnesia. There are some that still remember. There are some that are remembering more and more, but others that still don't remember anything at all. So therefore, um, let me check with her and I will get back to you. One moment. You were first there at the beginning of March. March 4th. And you went again just uh, a, a week and a half ago, about 10 days ago. Interesting. And you were mostly in the telepathic colony, which is number one. Yes. Telepathic languages and um, languages. That makes sense. Telepathic yes. thought and languages. Yes? Makes sense to me completely. Very good. Thank you. If there's no more questions, there are others who would like to come through. Is there another question? All right, it just sounds like some noise there. All right, I will bring someone else through because um, time is limited and there are many, of, uh, many others that want to visit, at least with greater messages. I want, just wanted to give an update on the colonies and let you know that everything is going fine, things are moving forward, and we are very happy to uh, bring as many of you aboard as 
as you would like. Hi, can you hear me? I did have a question. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I haven't um, been able to get onto the ship yet, but I'm very interested. But I wanted to find out from Cindy and from the colony which one would be the best one because I'm having twin flame uh, difficulty here on the planet where I'm at. I see. The, the best place for you would be A, telepathy, and um, uh, maybe six for healing, because not only do they do healing, but there is some intuition and some messages that come with some of the healing um, modalities. So you may be getting some information from uh, the healing area. But uh, you are you channeling at this time? Do you channel? The oh. volume. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Do you channel? Um, I have a session to set up with Mr. Jim tomorrow to work towards that. I see. You have channeling sessions coming or teaching classes. All right. Yes. It's to discuss that, but I wanted to find out, even if I discuss it with him, is there a way I can go do it on the colony? It, would they of be willing to set it up that they, way? Uh, colony 4 is a channeling area, and they do work with you in the astral. However, when it translates into the body, sometimes it goes directly to the subconscious, and you do not remember it. But the body does, and so do the, uh, the different things that you learned are still there. But it is better to learn uh, the channeling in the conscious state. We have found that there are those that have been vastly improved by using the channeling uh, area on the colonies, but there are those that have not remembered much as well. So uh, in order for us to get that into effect greater, they are they're working on a system that brings the subconscious into a conscious understanding. They have been able to do that with several other species, but not with humanity for some reason. And they are not sure what the snag is there, but they will find it. Very well. We will bring you to the colonies, but yes, learning on Earth is probably much better. Hello, can you open my mic, Mike? Hi, can you hear me again? Yes. Okay, I did have some channeling experience before in the past, but what I wanted to do was to learn the methods that you all use because everybody's kind of different in the yes. aspect of how they do it. So, of you know, just on that respectful aspect of it, that's what I'm saying too. Yes. The, you have your particular way that you will be channeling. It will not be the same as anyone else's. Your channel areas may be different than everyone else's, but they may be similar to other people's as well. But no one channels exactly the same. Uh, the information goes through different channel. There are several different areas of the brain that can be used to attach technology to uh, and get information for channeling. The ones that are the best are attached to the speech areas and attached to those areas of uh, intellectual thought processes. But a lot of times, some people cannot use those particular channels and they have to be circumvented in some way so that the channel can be used indirectly uh, sometimes indirect channeling um, is uh, better for some people. It's not as powerful or as strong, but it is very, still very effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. But um, as soon as they set it up on the ship for me to come on through, Astro will be great. So that way I can heal some of the aspects that's going on physically with me and mentally with me to get me through this. Yes. They will take you to the healing colony as uh, the uh, health colony, number two, for some kinds of healing that are different than what are on a colony six. 
Okay. There's some right. herbal and things of that nature that might be helpful. I appreciate that. Okay. You can have them set it up as soon as possible. It would be most helpful. I yes. appreciate that. Yes. Singy will set it up. Thank you. And thank you, Singy. Have a good day. And uh, that's all my questions. Very well. I will be moving on then, and it was good to speak to all of you, and I just would like to say that everything is going well, and we are working as hard as we can. There is always some difficulties, of course. It, can, it cannot be 100% smooth, but we are doing our best, and things are looking good. There are many changes happening on the Earth energies, by the way, and some of them are a little bit frightening because the earth energies are stirring up things that uh, were not stirred in your in your realm before so we are not sure how they will react with uh, mother Gaia but she will speak now it's mother Gaia's turn one moment please mm. <laughs> hello. hello, welcome. Ah, hello today. How is everyone doing? <laughs> nice, thank you. <laughs> it is Mother Gaia here, and I would like to speak to my people about the energies that are coming, and that are here actually, and that are um, you are getting used to. Um, first of all, yes, it is not always easy for the changes to happen. <laughs> But yet, they are necessary for the earth to continue. They are necessary for the earth to evolve in the way that it needs to move. You understand that an age, a change of energy was needed because the energies of the past were not as strong as the energies of the present. And now, different modalities for healing will, will come into play in a stronger way. The Asui Reiki is still a positive form of Reiki and still in use. But with the, these new earth energies, there will be new modalities, new thought processes, and greater ways to use the energy. Asui will pick up on these energies eventually, slowly, and will use them as well. But in the meantime, we will bring a new thought process to the whole uh, healing energy modality. So it is beautiful what the people are doing right now. Healing will be stronger. There will be things that will be able to be healed that were not been able to be healed before. And I know that it was said that all things can be healed through time with a sui. And that is true. If your belief system is intact with that, it is absolutely true that you could heal anything with, with the Asui Reiki. But now it will be a little easier and come a little faster. So that is a wonderful thing for our people. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'm sure you I must have, have a question. Something. Yes. Yes, we do. My name is Lila and I heard several times from different people that I have very close connection with you. And I would yes. like to know if uh, you would tell me what it is exactly. What the connection is? <laughs> is that what you're looking for? Yeah, what 
kind of connection, for example, if I was on the beginning, for example, of your creations, or do I have a yeah. personal, uh, something personal going on with you? That's what I heard. From yes, the, I am yeah. connected to all human beings and all those that are part of the earth at this time, of course. But there are other personal connections that are greater from other lifetimes as well. You see, I am with the earth right now and I am a creator being and I have been with my fellow creator beings in the past realms and perhaps you are one of these <laughs> and if so I will you will understand that we have been together in other realms it is hard to identify all creator beings that are coming to earth at this time because they're here for ascension purposes and here to keep light in a I think Jim just caught out. <laughs> we couldn't handle Gaia. Right, right. Let's see. I guess we'll call him on the phone. They need to restart. We got yeah. disconnect. And the thing is, he's probably shelling, so he doesn't know it, that he's disconnected. Yeah, I'll call him. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I can do some blessing while we wait. We all just need to love each other and love the earth because it's part of us and we are part of it. Ooh. Hello? Yes. Charles, why don't you go ahead uh, and do Jim some of the art and the Yes. Do you want me to? It's probably going to take a couple of minutes to restore it back. <laughs>
is it is it there again yeah welcome welcome back oh, oh yeah, very okay. very good i hear a voice now mm -hmm. on the other side <laughs> okay so that uh can we cont uh, can we answer my questions again well i was starting to and they they broke us off there must be something there that they either a they do not want you to know or b they do not want me to communicate it to anyone uh it must be personal it is working now yes yes it is working now but it must be a personal answer <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. Continue. 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 <laughs> I was gonna say Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. It oh. is so welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and Happy Mother's Day to all you that are our mothers as well. <laughs> Yeah, please jump in with the questions, everyone. Yeah, hey, Mother Gaia. It's you. How are you? I am well, thank you. So, you said that you are a creative being. That it yes. is. Ah, okay. Just, that's what uh, very, You must very be logical. to inhabit a planet. A planet is larger. A, a regular soul could not inhabit just a planet, but a creator being can. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus and Ra and others did uh, roam the earth as a creator being, so... Yes, there is some uncomfortable energy here. One moment, please. Is everyone all right? No, I also feel that energy. Huh? Really? There is uncomfortable energy on your side as well? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I just felt like really uncomfortable. Like. Yes, it's, I can tell that it is very uncomfortable energy. And I'm not sure where it's coming from, but it is definitely very strong. <laughs> but go ahead and ask your questions and I will try to answer them. Uh, no, I just want to understand that maybe we know each other. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, I understand. Yeah, and uh, I would like to call on God or something to help us with the protection if we need Thank you very much. <laughs> there is a question in the room here. Yes, dear. Yes, hi, Mother Gaia. Hello. Um, I'm Helga. <laughs> Helga, how are you? It's really not a question. It's just a general get things moving here a little bit. Yes. And that is about with this raise in frequency yes. moving to a higher density, I'm assuming, which is where you belong. Yes. There is so, There are so many different discussions as far as just a splitting, different timelines. How would you put it? Would it be more of a, just a general rise in density to, I believe, seventh? I don't know. And that the splitting and the B Earth and C Earth and... Oh, all that this, stuff. All that stuff, yeah. It's yes. Just one. It is... What happens is this. Humans try to intellectualize what the changes in energy because it affects them. Mm -hmm. they, they are affected by the change in energy, so <laughs> they must have an intellectual understanding yeah. of it. So therefore, they make up all these different theories and quantum excitements to make their mind work about what is happening with the energy. Let me explain exactly what has happened. Since September of of 15, 2015, the energies have been changing. The reason for this is because it is necessary for the Earth to continue in a, a whole state 
the energies have to change. The old energies had to move out. The new energies have to move in because fourth dimensional energy or whatever kind of energy you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Some call it fourth, some call it fifth, some, some call it seventh. Mm -hmm. Whatever energy that is <laughs> that you want to call it is moving in. These gateways are opening for you to move to a different mm -hmm way for you to move to a different density even you understand yes that? i do and as these portals open slowly my energy has to change yes and as my energy slowly changes <laughs> it brings new changes to the earth there will be a sort of uh, magic okay. that never existed before <laughs> on this planet or existed far, far in the past with different civilizations that were here in the past. But the world in as a whole was not ready for these densities, but it is now. And so these densities are here now and they're changing and you are feeling the changes of this. Some people have become depressed. Some people have become overactive. Some people have been very confused but what is happening is this they will calm down mm -hmm. into the new energy and feel the density change mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. now it is gradual yeah. <laughs> you cannot have an extreme density change all at once it has to come slowly it has to come with the growth mm -hmm. of humanity and humanity is not ready to accept it yet because it is fighting. You see all the negative things that are happening that are fighting against this new energy, but that is natural. It is just like adolescence. <laughs> and as you move, and I understand all that, but as you move, I was more interested in your thoughts about Gaia herself. My thoughts about me? About what density, where it eventually is going to take you or it'll be continual rising it, it the ascension is an eternal continuation okay the reason for that it's is plateauing at some time yes yeah, sometimes it plateaus a little but it continues to rise okay. let me tell you why as humans rise into the next dimension they continue to move closer and closer to the god realms mm -hmm. and that never ends mm -hmm. And as you continue to rise an ascension, it is called ascension for that particular reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of Gaia herself. Oh, and yes, planet. I am rising. Yes. Yeah, so it's about Gaia. I'm oh, absolutely. Yes. Although I know you're related, obviously. Oh, yes. It's about it's me. Yeah, it is about, about It is about me, yes. And it is about me and my people. And it is about our time together. Mm -hmm. It is not only about me as I understand. a... As as a creator being, but as a movement and a change, because I will not be on this planet forever. I will not, my yeah, energy I mean. will not mm -hmm. be here forever and ever. And that is when the people of the planet have changed mm -hmm. to the next level of density, then I may move and they may change out in some way, the energies that they are feeling for me. <laughs> so what's in store for you? Oh, it is whatever I want. Move into... Yes, I can move universe. into a different area, yes. Mm -hmm. I may move out and become a creator being once again, or I may move to another planet, but it is not yet time for any of that. There is still plenty of time for humanity and for me to be together. <laughs> Oh, but it's a good question because it, it is true that as a creator being, Mother Earth, me, Gaia, will eventually leave this planet and you will get another creator being in my place. Only because you will have changed and you will need different kinds of guidance. And I will have a rest. <laughs> another question. Some yes. Say that. Well, obviously, the the crust, you know, several hundred miles down, are is honeycomb. But in the very center, there is debate. 
whether there's actually a center sun and an inner earth. Okay, the Agartha, I believe it's called. However, it seems to me, and please confirm, it, it still looks molten in the 3D, but yes. it is a fifth, sixth, seventh dimension yes, area. So there is civilization. It's just not oh, of course. To, yeah. Yes, so there of is. course. There's, it is a molten area. Mm -hmm. But of course, there's beings that live in the sun. Oh, there are beings that have civilizations in different mm -hmm. suns, in different areas that are mm -hmm. in space. There's universes of fire that are complete mm -hmm. fire universes where beings exist. So, yes, there, there are beings and the civilizations in the center earth. of the earth. Of course there are. And there's many different things that are happening within me. I hold many different kinds of civilizations within me, but there are... Um, you have to understand some of them are not in this dimension. That's just it. And some of them are not being able to be seen by humanity. Mm -hmm. But as you move into the next dimension, <laughs> maybe one or two will be able to be seen by you. Those of the Himalayan golden people or those of the, the, the Agarthans that are underneath Mount Shasta, for example. You may be able to see these species in the near future, near being a hundred or two year, two hundred years, and they may come out. And this is not disclosure, but this is just an introduction to another species that lives on Earth. It just looks like a molten center, and there's no way that would be distinguished in the three D, even the four D. No, it would be something that's so out of phase. It'd have to be more in the fifth, sixth, seventh, perhaps. Whatever dimension you want to call it, it has, I do not label it. Well, I'm saying the frequency is so high, it's so out of phase. Yes, it's out of phase in, in the sense that there is a molten center, which is third appears, dimensional. And it appears that way, yes. It, it is third dimensional. There are third yes. dimensional portions of the yes. center of the earth, of yes. course. It has to be that way. It's just like the base chakra has right. all the chakras within it. Um, it is the molten center that has all the dimensions within it as well. I like that. Good explanation. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, Gaia. Hello, Gaia. Yes. Uh, we, ha we haven't yeah, really we talked. Haven't really talk uh, are yes. <laughs> I, I just, what I is your question? I usually just walk on you all the time. Ah, yes. And, uh, and what is it that you want to talk about today? <laughs> and, I love, and I love Hawaii that you created Hawaii for us. Ah, oh, thank you. That is the heart of the planet in many ways. Whatever emotions you take to Hawaii, <laughs> they will be amplified. <laughs> you will feel them in a greater way there than any other place. And some and, people re-recognize this because they are of a another dimensional thought process because the higher your thought process the greater the increase in joy <laughs> and and i also want to tell you like sometimes i'm going to go out in space and this is space but i will always come back to you gaia yes of course <laughs> this is where you were born this is where you were grounded into all those that were born on Earth must stay in the third dimension. They cannot live in another dimension, lest they eventually disintegrate. But you can stay in other dimensions for short periods of time, of course. It is, it's like taking a small vacation. <laughs> but you must live in your third dimension, because that is the dimension you are born to. That is the dimension where the meaning of your life and the purpose of your life is there. You do not have a purpose outside of the third dimension at this time if you are born to the third dimension. This is where your destiny is. <laughs> you do not be born to the third dimension and have destinies outside your realm. It does not happen that way. You may find information there. You may find in interesting things in other realms and other densities, but it is not your destiny or your journey or your meaning 
it is merely extracurricular information, facts, and thoughts. <laughs> they might contribute to your destiny in some way if you allow it to, but it is not that you should live in another dimension other than one, other than the one you are in at this time. <laughs> now, as I grow in my dimension, as dimensions change, perhaps there will be some that will actually be born in a part partial dimension, meaning that third and fourth will overlap in some way. And that is for another generation and they will be able to live a little bit in both but where they are born they must stay and if it's mostly third they must stay in third if it's mostly fourth they must stay in fourth <laughs> it's never going to be 50 50. <laughs> i will make sure of that there is a lineup of people who want to ask questions. Excellent. I cannot hear you. Gaia, can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, yes, very good. <laughs> Much love to you. Thank Much you love to all, you as well. Thank you for all the beautiful. Um, you, when you came in on your intro, you were speaking um, in a very vague way about the new energies yeah. that are related to you, but uh, the Yosui Holy Fire, and I believe you're talking about Aquarian Fire, which is, in my estimation, the Holy Fire just for the Aquarian Age. <laughs> is that correct? Yes. Yes. There are certain... Uh modalities of healing that are just for certain ages uh, and but galactic reiki uh, has transcended um or galactic uh, modalities have transcended centuries and millenniums so what so they've taught to you as well so i've because already the reason for this is because they take universal energy and put it into use Whereas you're speaking more of earth energies, my energies. <laughs> there are such things as uh, galactic and universal energies that are part of what you are experiencing now if the energy changes. Yes, that is true. Because why? Because the center of we are, your planet, this planet, is facing the center of the galaxy. And there's energies coming from there. There's uh, energies from the solar system that have changed. There's energies on the actual planet here that have changed. And thought processes and karmas and many things that are in the air have changed things permanently, as I you might understand. Uh, yeah. Yes? Correct? <laughs> And I was talking about the different energies that have become part of me now. And they will be continuing and growing. They have settled down, but they you will start to grow with these energies as time moves on. All right. I missed basically everything you just said due to freezing of my computer. But what I was going to ask, and I've already got a master's level in galactic Reiki, so I'm already using that energy. So Very I'm good. curious if you, so like if for public, like for instance, it's made a huge difference. The symbols I use that are in galactic Reiki, like in how, the healing goes any which way so that's yes. a plug <laughs> for galactic reiki <laughs> um additionally i was wondering um so i guess that actually answers what i was thinking in a way but also I, i'm super into sound healing you know and i got yes. a certification yes. <laughs> in 
not just the Hathors that I'm aware of. I have other situations. I'm pretty sure I channel your energy also. Oh, of course you do, dear. <laughs> There's yeah. no way to channel healing energy without me being involved in it. That is Your exactly energies true. are all around you and all around every single person that exists on the planet. So my energy is part of the healing modality. No question. So the... What I was wondering, because I'm delving into some learning about the more ancient modalities of sound and frequency, ah. so maybe you would like to tell us some amazing facts about that. Sound will have a great deal of uh, things to do with the future, yes, because sound is vibration. Vibrational understanding is something of the future that will change the way that people look at a science. <laughs> science is going to be changed by vibrational and frequency in, in a way that is unseen at this time or just beginning to be seen. The, the quantum energies of frequency, sound, and vibration are very, very powerful and can do many things that seem impossible. <laughs> they do not seem to, uh, uh, you know how light is also a wave and a particle, and it is a vibration as well. So light as a, a force in the, in the universe can be changed into anything. When God was first creating, take the light, move it into the different vibrations that light can be moved into, and it can become solid. What happens when the molecules of your body, <laughs> you, you are made out of small, really small little bits of matter, and that is how God created you. In, very small bits of matter put together in a way that is unique and only that of your of one of its kind in the universe <laughs> and so therefore what happens when you open up these little bits of matter are they not filled with energy and light if you split an atom how much energy is there <laughs> the multitudes because he has brought his energy and light into the smallest form to create large and incredibly intense and, and unique uh, creations. He is, but remember, these tiny bits of uh, atoms and lights are very powerful when divided. <laughs> Can I ask you to tap into when I, um, two weekends ago, stepped into, I wanted to step into my soul's purpose, and I, yes. made, I made a sound that was legitimately stunning. I mean, beyond, beyond human sound. <laughs> and I don't know. If and what did you see there? I didn't see, all I felt was bliss and joy, but I did not see yes. other than light. Um, I don't know if, me, if that was my soul, my oversoul. I don't I didn't even, it was too much for my human mind to come. It was your connection to God through your soul. As you get closer to God, Oh, your every cell in your body is overjoyed and filled with happiness and love. And the closer to God you are, that is how the body reacts. Every cell in your body explodes with joy, excitement, light, and beauty. It is undescribable because this is the way of the oversoul. You get used to being full of joy and light and and. And and the the feelings of the of God, I cannot explain it in the language of your peoples, but that is the closest I can come. <laughs> so I would just like to encourage people. Um, you know, I I've missed a lot of what you've said because of my computer freezing, but I just wanted to 
it's very apparent that we as human beings have very little idea how powerful we are and of how, course that's true how, you are. how we're all healers and we can literally use sound our own sound to heal our chakras to heal our mind to heal our body we can do this daily just by little bits of noises and singing so i would like there to are so many different healing modalities that can be used by earthlings sound, vibration, the energies that you hold within your body and bring in from other places. It is almost unlimited. God has created within you a soul that is partly who he is. The fire of your being is part God. That is why you are unique. That is why you have so many creative elements and modes. If you were to believe in yourself as the God being that you are, you would be able to open up the mind in greater ways and believe in how massively beautiful and powerful you are. Of course, you are a small God, but yet you're <laughs> made in his image. <laughs> you're God, but you're just a baby God, okay. <laughs> You're the baby god, but you can do much more than you think you can. <laughs> yeah, I, I do understand that. Much love. Thank you. Got to go. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> hey, thank you. Next is Lila. Hi, Gaia. We got interrupted. And how you yes, said. I'm sorry, dear. I know that you had questions about wh who we are, how we are connected in the past. Is that correct? Yes, because how you said we are unique. So I would like to find out the uniqueness between me and you and not everybody else. So that's my point. There is only one you and there is only one me. That makes our relationship very unique. <laughs> exactly. So my feeling is because of what I know a little bit about my soul, I could yeah. be I could be involved in the creation of of the planet Earth. And is that accurate? And something else, you know, whatever you want. Uh, yes. You are involved in much creation. Yes. Um, you feel a closeness to the earth <laughs> because you were there when it was formed. Yes. I do not know if you were one of the creator beings that formed uh, this solar system or not because I would have to come out of the earth and speak to uh, the universe about that or to God or someone. But I do know that you were there when, when uh, the earth was formed before I was even here in within it. <laughs> you see, even before I was here, the earth was formed and then I came into it to give it life. So it, that is like with the human uh, human body too. First the body and then the soul comes in? Well, not exactly. It is God that creates uh, the fire that is the life within the soul. And b b before you even are uh, developed in any way, the soul is the fire that is there first. So your your fire in your soul is put there and then the body uh, is, is created around it because he knows what he wants for each individual. That particular fire is your uniqueness as I understand it. Of course, I don't understand God completely because who does? <laughs> But that is the understanding that I have for humanity, that he throws his fire there and the, the soul is created and then the life comes from there. Wonderful. But with planets and rocks and things of that nature, if there is to be life within the stone, there is life already there because all cells and all creations Everything that God creates has some sort of sense about it. Even a rock, even a stone or whatever has a sensibility or a, an energy about it. 
Otherwise, these stones that are sitting in front of me could not have any kind of power or energy without me putting my energy into them. But God has already done that and given them purpose and given them, a, in a way, a thought process. But it is not activated always. But do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I have a I have a, a, a personal question because oh, yes. because you are you are a person. Do you have a, a look what you can uh, describe about yourself? Like I see, mm -hmm, I see yes. you in my meditation. I dress you with the green uh, dress and all kinds of stuff and garland. <laughs> and for me, you have a long black hair. Yeah. So could you tell us how you look for us? Actually, I look like Earth. But you may picture me in any way that you wish. You see, once I am part of this world, all things that are me are Earth. Even the core, even the life that is within the core, and the life that with, lives within me and on me are part of me. So when you envision me, you cannot envision me without envision the people and the mountains and the streams because it is all part of my energy. Because when you are born and God has put his life into you, I am also around you to bless you into this world and to give you a place. <laughs> if, you, if you will go for an audience with God, would you go as a planet Earth or as a person? Personif personification of the energy of person? Earth. Yes. I would go as a creator being to him because that is what I originally know him from. Okay, so you do have a personal form. Oh, yes. I can. Creator beings can take other forms as well, as, as you know. But as I'm here, this is the form that I take. The grass, okay. the trees, the mountains, the streams. They are all part of my energy. Can the tree grow without me? No. Can the flower bloom without me? No. But, yes, I am here and this is who I am. Right now, this is my identity. Okay, it thank you. Be my identity. It is the thing, it is my job. It is the thing I love the most right now. My highest excitement is being for you and with you. Uh, we all love you. We all love you. We could not exist without you. So that's for sure. Of course not. But yet, I could not exist without God. So therefore, it is God and I together that create all the things that exists around you. Well, and that's called perfection. In some ways, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Gaia. And always perfection, always perfection. And there is greater perfection to come. <laughs> yes. Greetings and blessings, Gaia. Greetings. Um, <laughs> um, you're doing wonders for my garden. Ah, love the gardens. They bring joy to many. And the weather is kind of bizarre. It goes from sunny to snowing the next day to cold and rainy and back to sunny. Um, have you heard of the shiny, the shiny show with um, Allison and... Um, I think it's Carrie who um, talked to different planets or channeled them. Oh, I've heard of that. Yes. <laughs> Mother <laughs> Venus. Is, uh, I don't know if they know all their names correctly, but well, Lady Venus is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> they are hilarious. And um, it reminds yes. me. <laughs> We are a very fun-loving group. When you become a planet, you have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. 
<laughs> Most of the planets are female in their thought process. Why? Because they must be mothers and nurturers. They must be, they must give birth to many different things. And so we take on a female sort of persona in most cases so that we may uh, feel and understand um, uh, many things about creativity and being that's, creators. So that's why, it, that's why it's funny to um, hear the channeling about Mars, which is not yes. masculine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know. But a lot of the planets are females. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> you are welcome. There are some male planets. Don't get me wrong. There are some that choose to have male personas for the reason that they are. Um, they have a purpose in doing so. I will let them speak for themselves on their own time. But there are fewer male planets. And um, male, there are fewer male large bodies of um, uh, creations than female because uh, the female identity seems to work better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nam Namaste, Gaia. Ah, yes, hello. <laughs> It's Marlene. Uh, my first question is, uh, it's understood that your light bodies are all ascendant. Um, so I was, uh, I'm looking to find answers um, pertaining to your physical body. When will this ascension come into being? Which ascension? For the planet? Or your, physical, or your physical body, yeah, yeah, yeah. My physical body is actually a creator being body, which is a spiritual kind of body, which is not as solid as you might want to think. But it can be solid. I can change my shape. That is how I can become the earth and be part of it. Do you understand that? As, as a creator being, <laughs> I can be whatever I want to be. But only because I am a steward of the universe. God has created creator beings because he wants to continue to do what he finds as his highest resonation, and he wants to continue to do that. And in order for the uh, galaxies and uh, solar systems and universes to be taken care of, he made some creator beings so that he may concentrate on the things that he wants to do the most. Of course he understands who we are and, and everyone around us, and he does make contact here and there and everywhere across the millennia of universes that there are. But he does have highest excitements as well, and he does have a great understanding that creativity is who he is at the base and he is continuing to create, create, creating more and more perfection. And as he does this, he is becoming and is greater in who he is in his own identity, which we cannot even understand as creator beings because he is so much more vast than we are. Yes. Your physical body, is it moving in our galaxy has it changed it positions is. and where to right now everything is moving constantly there is no such thing as stasis galaxies are moving planets are moving suns are moving there is no such thing as anything being is standing still even if you were to stand as still as you could your planet is still moving around you you're still moving in space you're still moving around the sun so there is always movement and yes i am moving always um pertaining to your the because of the energies and everything is in acceleration right now where yes, where are you going right now if i may ask you where how close are you getting to the center uh, i'm 
I believe you mean to the fruition of my journey. Is that what you mean? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. I'm sorry. Do you mean to the end of my journey? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, the end of your journey, but in particular, in the, uh, this particular time. Um, I know there's uh, no time up this there. This particular but time, yes. I'm not sure that perhaps you're looking at this thing differently than I am. But my, my existence here is moving forward continuously. And I am in the midst of changing energies and dimensions and purposes and missions and everything is coming with me and as i am moving forward i am bringing the earth and all the peoples the plants and animals and all the every atom of the earth with me to a new place a new density and what you want to call that you may call it whatever you will i I call it Terra Ha because that is the next place and the third density will not cease to exist but it will cease to matter when it comes to who I am. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. My other question, <laughs> thank you, is pertaining to the nodes the self node uh, is moving uh, into Leo and the, um, the self node is moving into Aquarius and the north node is moving into Leo. And my question was pertaining to Saturn where to Saturn takes about 30 years to come around. How does this affect us, uh, uh, you, uh, as your, your body and humans? Well, of course, all the planets in the solar system have a, have a certain pull on the Earth, a certain attraction to the Earth in that way. Saturn, in its greatness, with its uh, great rings and things of this nature, has a different kind of pull than any of the other planets because of this. You understand that, correct? Yes. And so what you are feeling from the planet of Saturn, plus the fact that it has some very distinguishable uh, features, as you also know, mm -hmm. and it is bringing uh, a different density to, uh, it is helping me with my density change. That is its major factor. Saturn, we know as being an instigator, as you said, to bring in change. How is it affecting our change, Gaia? It is bringing you to a less dense body, a less dense uh, surroundings. It is a less dense planet. You may think Saturn is solid as a rock, but it is not. It is a less dense area. And it is bringing a uh, the the action of it's being a catalyst to change on our planet. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you might see it as uh, a negative force. Some people do. Nothing is negative in the universe That's right. if you don't make it negative. That's true. It can be a, a positive use if you find that use. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> Hello. Mm. I wanted to ask about the billions of people having here. So uh, where from all these uh, billions of souls? What they, are they new? Are they newly generated? Or what they come from? from where, where from the billions of souls came for the present uh, huge humanity? <laughs> A very good question. God is continuing to create souls in the universe. Now, some of them want to be here and some of them do not. If you want to be in the earth, if you want to 
uh, bring the earth forward in a way that is um, third dimensional and reaching into the fourth dimension, then you will be here at this time. Now, people think, oh, there cannot be more souls coming into existence. It's just impossible. But God is creating new planets, new universes, and new solar systems all the time. And so, therefore, there are new, new things coming and new thought processes, even different than what has possibly been imagined. And so, therefore, today is a new day. Every day is a new day for millions and billions of souls in the universe. So, yes, where do these souls come from? God is a creator. And we are the stewards of his creation. Um, just speaking in numbers, so most of the souls, like a, a, a century ago, there was maybe less than a billion so a billion humans on Earth. So, yes, uh, one option would be that these are mostly alien souls or fresh souls without past incarnations, or maybe most the souls them, at this time most of them are old souls. Most of them are, are old souls from different places, and it is because <laughs> it is a time of ascension here, a critical time. Not just a time of ascension, but, but a critical time where there's so many changes happening, so much energy changes, so many diversities coming, they must hold the light. They must hold the light, and it cannot be held by just anyone at some times. So many of these great souls have come back to Earth to help hold it and uplift this at this time. The beginning of the ascension is the greatest and most important time. When anything starts, when any revolution starts, who are those that are remembered the most? those that began the revolution, those that continued it from the beginning. The ones in the middle sometimes get lost in, the, in, in time because the creators and the beginning, the ones at the beginnings were the, the major thrust. That is why there are so many now here holding the light and, be, and having missions of great importance with ascension. Now, there are some in this room that have great purposes with the ascension because, and some within you, within the realms out there that have great missions within the purpose of ascension because the energy needs to be held. People need to be told. Things need to open up. People need to wake up. And that is uh, the time that we are in right now. It is essential for people to wake up and find out that there, these changes can affect their future. Not only is your planet in jeopardy at some point within the, it's my, it's my responsibility to help you wake these people up so that they realize what is happening and that things are moving into a new dimension and a greater understanding a new evolution. Oh, thank you. Uh, and rel related question was that uh, <laughs> many souls choose positivity and choose um, spirituality, but many more souls st choose to stand in lower and lower, less as low vibrations and focus on negative things. So, is it? It looks like we are splitting. Uh, what will happen to souls that choose to stay in the in the past? I cannot tell you how God deals with those souls because he deals with them individually because of their intentions. <laughs> I mean, you must understand intention has much to do with it. And sometimes there are those souls that are left in negativity because they intend, they believe that that negativity is doing something positive. Right. But yet, it may not be. But yet, their intention is that, oh, let me give you an example. 
there are those that train up their children to believe that that uh, prejudice is correct and right, and that hatred has a positive influence in their life. But yet, is that really true? To them it is. But in reality, in God's world, in the understanding of eternity and, re and true love and unconditional love, it is not true. But their intention is to protect their children to, and to bring an understanding of what they believe is true to the world. It may not be positive, but yet their intention is positive. I'm talking more about collectively. Uh, Dolores Cannon was speaking about the earth splitting or having split into two timelines where uh, in one timeline, um, people who wanted to ascend um, went into high vibration and the second timeline where people who wanted to stay in the past just all together collectively stay stay in the in the old uh, style, old type of it living. Happens. Is yes, it right? That has happened. In the there are species that have divided, and one is now in the fourth or fourth or fifth dimension, and one has stayed in higher third or whatever. There is a fear of change. There is a fear of the unknown, and some will uh, gravitate toward the the baser area. But that does not mean that they are uh, that they are bad people or they are doing what is wrong. But they are gravitating toward what they feel is the best thing for them. So, but you have to remember this as well. Communities begin with one person sometimes, and so. When you have one thought process that is negative, it can bring in a group of people into that thought process because they have fears or misunderstandings about what the next area is all about. And so a division will happen with Earth and the, its people, but not quite yet. But yes, it is a more serious matter when species divide. But it is not that one is necessarily more negative, but they're afraid, and that is a portion of negativity, yes. They are, they are holding on to some negative thought processes or things that are, uh, they feel are unknown. That doesn't make them negative people as a whole. But they are holding on to, like I was saying, negative understandings of what positivity is. Imagine a fear of a light worker who wakes up and discovers he ended up on the lower uh, on the lower earth. So their split has split and uh, a light worker ended up with uh, a lower part of the humanity. <laughs> and how would that be if his understanding is not fearful and his love of of all is great and his density is moving toward God in a greater way than this group of people how could he possibly be down here right uh, that's all I wanted to ask uh, uh, <laughs> you are sure next put yourself right thank you <clears throat> hey guy uh, when you spoke before about you changing your appearance because you're a creator, then you mean only when you're going to return to the creator realm? Uh, when I return to the creator realm, is, is this what you're asking? When will I return? Uh, yeah, I know that only when you return to the status that you can reclaim uh, your powers, if you want to call it, it that. Will, it will be a gradual return. Just as all things, um, well, not all things are gradual, but all things that of great changes for populaces and for beings can be gradual when God is controlling how it is moving. So I will gradually move into the new uh, um, ascension time, but I will move beyond it, and your people will have a new 
a creator being come in to be with them in that realm? I know that there are 47 creator beings. Is that includes you? No. These are ones on Earth. I am the Earth. I see. And spirit before uh, stopped you, so I will try to ask it in a way that maybe spirit will allow and I can assist uh, spirit. There are uh, 33 or 35 uh, that are awaken and there are like yeah. 11 that are still asleep. Is there now another one that is awaken? There are 34 awake in the in the creator realm, uh, 34 awake in the human realm that are creator beings. Yes. <laughs> what I'm asking is there, if there's not one that during the conversation is now beginning to awaken, maybe I can assist. Oh, yes. I'm only counting the ones that are awakened fully. There are others that are starting to awake, which is wonderful. They all need to awake for this to for them to have the greatest effect on ascension, but there's still some to go. <laughs> yeah, and they are awakening. Um, there are some that are still awakening, yes. Yeah, it's amazing that I know um from uh, Elika that they are like 2.1 or 1.8 million in the entire universe. So that's like a very huge support from the universe to bring so many uh, creator beings here. Creator beings are small compared to God. So you must understand there are many, many universes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that I know. But still, in this universe, uh, 2 million in the entire universe, it's nothing. And 47 to come here, it's a lot. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and uh, if you will turn before me, say hi to Alaika. I did not get that last part. What? <laughs> if you will turn before me, say hi to Alaika. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, he is a great being. Many are speaking to him these days. He is a very joyful and wonderful creator being. And with much knowledge about things that are happening on the earth and how to become a greater person. I love him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he spoke with me. He said that we are friends from that era. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it was wonderful <laughs> to speak with him and gave me a lot of knowledge of things that I uh, needed to understand already. Very so good. I am so glad. <laughs> yeah, if you return before me, just say hi and tell him that I'm on my way. Very good. <laughs> oh, forgive me for laughing, but this is such a joyful time when there are so many good questions and so many things that people can learn. It is hard to sometimes describe or teach some of the things that are of higher, of higher thought processes because they can be broken down so many ways and they can be misunderstood and they can be brought into a different understanding. That is why I try to be as plain as possible. But I see that there are some, there's some confusion sometimes. But you see, do not be too set on the facts of the, of the, the ascension, but that you are working yourself in a proper way to move forward, that you just have the information you need to become a, an unconditional lover of all things, of someone that's moving out, a great example. You don't need facts and figures. The smallest creature with no knowledge whatsoever can be a great light worker with unconditional love and beauty toward others facts and figures and intellectual thought processes are not necessary for the, in, the ascension to grow or to be successful. But what is necessary is that you are knowing that you are on your path and you're doing your best to show God's love through your being. 
That is the most important thing of the ascension, not facts and figures and intellectual knowledge or knowing if you are or are not a creator being because in the long run, you will draw attention to yourself in the universe when you are loving and unconditional. You are becoming a greater light. You are becoming a greater vision. You are being able to be seen by a greater group of spirits, individuals, aliens, whatever you want to call them. You see, this is the importance of it. I do not want to draw attention to facts and figures and intellectual knowledge. It is nice to have, and it is beautiful that God has put so many wonderful complexities into the universe. But at the basis of all these beautiful and intellectual and amazing facts is unconditional love, which is more powerful than a supernova, which is greater than anything else in the universe. And those that are aware of this have greater control of the world around them than they can possibly imagine. Believe in your love. Believe in God as a creator that you are connected with because your creation portion is directly linked to, to him in many ways. And I want to see more of you use your energies of healing, channeling, and bringing information into the world for a greater good, for people to excel, for people to brighten than any other time on Earth's history, really. This is a time for everyone to shine. It is, does not matter how smart you are. It matters how much love you can give. Thank you, Mother Gaia. Um, blessings. I have a question. I'm just wondering if there are any messages from you. I, oh, <laughs> I've been, uh, yeah. I have a lot of stuff running in my head lately. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, bring yourself into calmness. Um, I see that around you in your third dimension, there is things that are happening that are drawing you a, away from um, a fourth dimensional thought process at times. And it, it, it discourages you. Well, maybe not discouraged, but it makes you wonder how you're going to get through this particular time. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. If I can't schedule time to meditate, how is it going to work? How am I supposed to do what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> I see this. I see this. But let me tell you something that will help you. Okay. You can meditate no matter what you're doing. All you have to do is shoot up a thought to God and say, thank you. Just bring me the strength to get through this. Bring me the love that I need to show as an example to them that, I, that they need. Because the people around you need love, don't they? Yes. And you do too. Yes. There, there's one to find that love from these people at times, but you must be the example of it. You are the brilliance. You, you're the, the glue that holds things together, aren't you? Supposedly, I've been told so. <laughs> yes, and that is the truth. Which is a big responsibility. But also a great and wonderful gift to you in the sense that you are able to affect so many in a positive way. This is a great shining example of who you are. Now, I know that you have your weaknesses and there are moments where you falter as well, but do not worry, you are human. And I, I love you and God loves you and you are pulling through this and your energy is strong 
and vital. There is one that's particularly difficult, isn't there? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> I, I have never talked to you before, have I? No, the only person I talked to has been to Kerr. Yes, so should he. <laughs> but you are given great energy. You are Thank given you. great energy. Thank and you, you will make it through, and your light is bright. Do not let it falter. And I don't think you will. But it, you find it difficult at moments to bring yourself into agree, agreement with some of the things that are happening, because you don't agree with them. But your light is shining through to these people. Continue to be the example that you are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very good. Blessings. <laughs> Blessings to you. Ikara Moshuti. Hello. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Omran, you are muted. Yes, sorry. <clears throat> Hello, Gaia. Yes. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I believe you, you know, my energy, my feeling, who I am, and our connections together. You directly call like on me many times. You are, you are one that directly calls on me. I, I hear you. You, you call directly to me at times. And yes, our that connection is, is very strong. <laughs> <laughs> that is... I actually had a question regarding that because I have been around you since your birth here, since yes. you came into this world. And I would like to know, because it seems like I have taken a role over and over again in my incarnations here. They were kind of the same agendas that I had. Could you tell me something about our co agreements, our contracts together, yeah. why I had to always <laughs> come down and help you? Yes. Humanity. Well, the thing is this. You have a very similar contract because in each way that you come to help me and to help the earth is different, a little bit different every time. And you are teaching yourself about the creator beings in a very, very real way. I, uh, this is a personal conversation, really. But... <laughs> Your incarnations are teaching you the fullness of how to do the job that I am doing now. Ascension. Do you understand that? Yes. You've always understood that, haven't you? Yes. And I know that. Because you and I speak, we speak on a very real and very personal level many times through many incarnations, through many difficult times, through the passages of a third dimensional existence. Now, third dimension is difficult and can be very stressful. However, you choose to come back and learn it over and over again for the reason of being a creator of a, a being a creator being in the in a planetoid sense one day you will enter this mission and you will find it very interesting but remember you will probably enter it in a female type of mindset so that is all right but you prefer the male you prefer being male on the earth, though. <laughs> that I enter the female mindset, you said? Yes. You, when you become a planet or enter oh. a planet thought process, you will become a female mindset. <laughs> okay. Is that so I have that right now? Or I don't understand. You have some of that now, yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, but I always that. chose to be male, <laughs> and I always ch chose to be a male on Earth, and all yes. of my incarnations were male. It's, that's what I said, yes. <laughs> yes, for, for a specific reason. 
Yeah. Oh yes, that's true. You yes. you have to be to learn it properly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And oh yes, my I other, <laughs> yes. My other question is, my past incarnations with you on Earth, it was always, I was always between the light and the dark. You said I would, I would bring down my creator being here on Earth. Well, so is is that going to be? kind of a battle between the dark and the light in future for me again like the it, previous one it is always a battle in some way but it only is a battle when you make it a battle many of the times <laughs> you can do you can move through the darkness without a battle if you choose to battle it is because there is a reason for you to understand why there is a conflict but there are times when you move through negativity or the darkness or whatever you want to call it without a battle and prove to yourself that the light is a, a smooth passageway. Now, the battles are important. They're great teachers. However, you must choose them, and you do. And they teach you what you need to learn about the next incarnation. Yes, correct, correct. Thank you very much, Gaia. I, I, I have a lot of work to do with you. Just yes. <laughs> is there is there any any short message from anyone I should know at this moment? Um. Thank you very much. That was a message from um, Off World, but they brought it through at this time, and it is in your subconscious at this time and will be brought forth at a later date. Thank you very much. I think I know who it was. Yes. You do. Much love, Gaia. See you later. Much love to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, is anybody oh. else who wants to ask questions? Yeah, this is Stephanie. I just had one. Yes. Thank you. Good morning and um, blessings to you. Blessings to you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Mother Gaia can always use blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering, and this may be a basic question, but what is the central sun? Is that that, dif is that different than a galactic sun? I don't know that I understand the concept. Is it concept, the energy? Well, it that is. It. All, Thank you. It's all in your understanding of what the central sun is. Now, um, I don't want to go into philosophy and all of that sort of thing, but uh, many times when they refer to the central sun, it is the core of the earth that is your central sun, my central sun, uh, the, the sun that is uh, emanating for those beings that are uh, within the earth. That is the central sun. There is another central sun that is, uh, no one knows where it is on Earth, that is. But it is a central sun in, of all the universes. And that is something completely different. But I believe the ones that make, the one that makes the difference to you is the central sun in the center of the Earth. Ikera! <laughs> There are other teachings about central suns and many thoughts about it. And there, are, there can be uh, other understandings, and I understand that. And I do not, I do not uh, want to go into the different philosophies that are involved with the central sun, but except that I, I call the center, the, 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 uh, the center of the earth is this, my center sun, in the sense that it is a molten area, it is a, a fiery area, and it is light for other beings, and it is a 
It is the world where some beings live. All right, I think it's time to go. I don't think there's any more questions, is there? I have, <laughs> I have a brief one, if I may, Gaia. Oh, of course. I have an upcoming assignment uh, shortly. Yes. I know that you know of it. Um, yes. Can you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this particular one. They're all different, of course. Um, yes. What um, information or guidance uh, can you uh, give to me for the upcoming one uh, in regards to yes. our work together, please? Yes. All right. I'll give you some advice about that. First of all, because it is a very wonderful project, you must stay grounded. Remember that. I know that you are a grounded person mostly, but when it comes to missions of this nature, you have to make sure that you stay in a grounding all the time because you, uh, there will be many different energies that will try to take you away from that. Do you understand? Very well. So therefore, stay grounded is my first thing. Second of all, stay as the positive example. Of, of course, that's always just a given. but in this particular uh, mission, it will be easy to be sidetracked or um, your thoughts to be moved aside so that you will uh, not be so much of a good example as being sort of quiet and in the background. But you want, do you understand what I mean by that? Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more? Okay. I would like you to make sure that you are always uh, giving that positive, loving, good example. Otherwise, if, if you are not, they may not respond the same. How is that? Thank you, yes. Clear now. Yes. And so those two things are very, very important because in projects of this nature, you can be sidetracked and people will try to, and energies will try to sidetrack you. So keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I call on you once, um, once I touch the ground, please? Always, always, always. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to working with you again. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to work with the people of the earth. I love there you. There might be I love you. Out, out there. Are there any more questions? Go ahead. No. I think that's all. Very well. Uh -huh. I will go for now. It has been a pleasure speaking to you. I hope that I have brought some light to your world. <laughs> yes, thank you. I invite more because blessings. Because I am not the sunshine. I am the planet. <laughs> I do have a sense of humor, though. Yes. Much love to you, and I will talk to you all some other time. Remember, if you are feeling that you need some healing energy, lay on me in the warm weather, touch me, stand on me in your bare feet. I can be a healer if that is what you intend me to be. Call on me, and I will send you energies of a healing nature. Good day. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hey, welcome, Jim. Hi, how you doing? Good, thank you. Um, whoo! There was some interference during those sessions. Yes. yes. <clears throat> but toward the end, it got a little better. Yes, mm -hmm. the energy was good. Good. All right. Is there any closing blessings? Yeah, please go ahead, people. 
Раз, круто, секрет, круто, секрет, тут горы, секрет, тут и круто, раз, секрет, тут There is a light that always shines, and be that light, and contain it within yourself, so that others may see it, and know that it exists in more than one place. Other dimensions have deep colors, greater than the ones in your dimensions. But the colors that come to you now are those from the next era that you will be a part of. Do not turn them away. the voice of the universe says peace and love and tranquility calmness to all of you and to rise up in a spirit of confidence and awareness all right johannes yeah sure is coming me then אליהין ואלה שעוד עדיין לא זכינו לשמוע מהם מי ייתן וכולם יגיעו בקרוב לכדור הארץ מי ייתן ונזכה לחסד ונזכה להיות בעורם מי ייתן ונהיה תחת כנפיו של יואבה אלוהינו אדוני אחד אמן um, the God of light be with you always and eternally and shine in a great power to bring you up in the, in the way that he only can do and you will be strong and mighty. Nice. Ruka na na ni a waria kasushua ra ki a na 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 waria wasi si aru a na 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 kusushua ka ki a na 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 waria wasi si aru a na 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 kusushua ra ki a na 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 wasi si no ra ki a waria wasi ki a na 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 wasi a waria ri 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 a na 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 waria ri 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 a ru 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 wa ra 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 wa ra 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 ri. Who? We see the patterns that God has laid before us, and we see the journeys of your people as a pattern that is one of great complexity. But feel that it is simple in the way that love can decipher it and make it have greater meaning without all the different turns. Whoa. That was a somewhat binary language. Um, there was some binary in there. All right. All right. You want to do? Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jim. Um, oh, Angie wants to do one before oh, you go. Thank you. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Yaka Yania at the tea, I see I wine, yes, what a tea is it in the water? Yes, what tea, I yan, what to see at the tea? You should one in in a one year. As when you just was easy up one in it, yan yanoa. 
Universal prophecies unfold little by little, and we see that this uh, time on your planet is unfolding in the way that it should. But there still are dangers. Do not be afraid. Move forward with confidence and love. Anyone else? All right, I will repeat the announcements. Uh, visit humancolony.org mm, human or org, H U C O L O dot uh, org. And um, this Friday we are doing um, uh, 1230 EST. Introduction to Galactic Reiki. Introduction to Galactic Reiki. Takur will teach for an hour. Um, to join, go to hukula.org. Um, I do. Tuesday morning and Thursday evening, uh, you're going to the channelings, hukula.org, and join our Facebook group. Click on hukula.org and join, uh, click on discussion. Uh, and uh, it's hurry up to buy your air tickets for the Hukula Ascension Workshop in August. Go to hukula.org, information is there. And that's about it. Very well. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. And much love. Much love. Thank you. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.